Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Cardiology for You. I am Associate Professor Jana Simova and today I am going to speak to you about a very dear topic of mine about the role of point of care echo. Before we get started into it, please make sure that you have subscribed to my, to my YouTube channel and that you have clicked on the ring bell button so that you get notified whenever I'm posting a new video. So if you're ready, let's get started with the point of care echo. I have, I have divided this presentation in three parts about the focus, LUS and BIOT and you would see what this means just in a minute. First about the focus, I would not concentrate very much here because there is a very good document from the European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging about the focus cardiac ultrasound and in this document the scope of the focus is defined as a point of care cardiac ultrasound examination aimed to rapidly detect a limited number of critical cardiac conditions and it is not there to completely evaluate cardiac function and morphology and so the targets of the focus are to assess the global left ventricular systolic function and size, the global right ventricular systolic function and size, the pericardial effusion and intravascular volume assessment and the clinical scenarios in which this would be useful are uh, shock cardiac arrest, chest pain, chest trauma and respiratory compromise so these are as you see most emergency scenarios. This was all about the focus that I would say um, for now and I would transfer to the other topic which is LUS which stands for the lung ultrasound. Dear colleagues from its traditional uh, row of assessment of pleural effusion and masses, lung ultrasound has moved towards the revolutionary approach of imaging the pulmonary parenchyma, mainly as a point of care technique. But let's first start with the pleural effusions. They are very easily discerned, very easily evaluated. You could quantity, the amount of the um, pleural effusion, the, the um, site where it is most prevalent. Also you could see if it is mostly like a transudate or an exudate, if there is much fibrin there and if there is a lung atelectasis. And this is the main things about uh, pleural effusions and now we move to another part which are the B lines. Of course the first question that arises is what are these B lines? So the B lines are these discrete laser like vertical hyperechoic artifacts that arise from the pleural line and move synchronously with lung sliding and it is very important to remember that the multiple and diffuse B lines are the sonographic appearance of pulmonary interstitial syndrome. So in the normal conditions the lung is filled with air and it looks black with ultrasound. You could see only the pleural line and the artifacts from the pleural lines which are called the A lines. As much as the lung get filled with interstitial fluid, um, there are more and more B lines appearing which are a sign of interstitial edema to the part that the whole field that you see 
is nearly white, filled with these B lines, which is the sonographic appearance of pulmonary edema. So how to assess the B lines is another very important question. We have the complete scan, which, comprise, which comprises 28 sites. These sites are located from the second to the fifth intercostal space in the parasternal, midclavicular, anterior and mid axillary lines bilaterally, with the exception of the fifth intercostal space on the left, where, of course, you see the heart and not the lung. So, scanning all this, how to quantify the B lines? Just count them. As you see here, we have one B line, two B lines, three, four, five, and seven B lines. You have to freeze the image and count the B lines. There is also another rule when you see the whole field of the lung as a black field, then you don't have B lines. When you see the whole field of the lung as a white lung, then you have 10, which is the maximum number of B lines that you could have on a certain field. When you have um, like a zebra, half and a half, black and white spaces like, like here, then you have 5 B lines. And here is an example. I hope it will get moving, yes. You see that how the B lines appear. Please remember that they are dynamic. They change with the lung motion, with the sliding of the two plural lines. And you have to freeze the image uh, where the most of the B lines are seen and count them just there. So, now we get to the clinical application of the B lines. Um, one very useful application for colleagues that don't have much experience with cardiac ultrasound um, working at emergency department is when a patient comes with acute dyspnea. Um, you have here the differential diagnosis if this is an exacerbation of the COPD or this is an acute pulmonary edema. If you don't have the competency to do um, a complete cardiac ultrasound examination, don't worry, you could only look at the lung with every kind of transducer that you have, no matter if it is for abdomen, for vessels or for transthoracic echo, every kind works good, believe me. And if you see the B lines, then probably you have the acute pulmonary edema. And if you see this profile with A lines, with artifacts of the pleura, then probably you have exacerbation of COPD. Another very useful application for the B lines is for the differential diagnosis of acute lung injury, like in ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome and, um, and its differential diagnosis with acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema. In the case of ARDS, we have uh, alterations in the pleura, we have these subpleural consolidations and also, which is very typical, we have spared areas defined as areas of entirely normal sonographic lung appearance surrounded by areas of multiple B lines. While in the case of acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema, we have the thin and smooth pleural line 
and multiple B lines which are diffuse and all over the lung fields that we study. And the is another very useful application of point of care ultrasound and lung ultrasound is in the differentiation of different kind of shocks in patients presenting with acute circulatory failure. So the first thing to do is a simple emergency cardiac sonography as you see here. Then you could rule out or rule in a tamponade or pulmonary embolism which could be the cause of an obstructive shock. And then you get to the uh, lung ultrasound with the so-called blue protocol uh, where blue stays for bedside lung ultrasound in emergency. First, you um, search for signs of pneumothorax. I will get to it a little bit later. If you found this pneumothorax, then it means that again you have the obstructive shock. If you don't find the pneumothorax, then you should define if you have the A profile of the lung of these patients or the B profile of the lung of these patients. If you have the B profile, usually you have a cardiogenic shock and should treat it respectively. If you have an A profile, then you start with another protocol, the so-called false protocol, which stays for fluid administration limited by lung sonography. So this means that you start the fluid therapy and follow the patient with lung ultrasound. If the patients get a clinical improvement, then probably it has been a hypovolemic shock. However, if there is not a clinical improvement and B profile is generating um, during this fluid therapy, then this means usually that you have a septic shock. So, we come to another useful application of the B lines and not only B lines but uh, point of care multi-organ sonography for the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism. You see here that the three different methods to diagnose pulmonary embolism like echo, lung, echocardiography, lung ultrasound and vein ultrasound, they by themselves have not very high sensitivity to detect the pulmonary embolism while they have a very good specificity. That means that if you if you find some pathological uh, values, then probably you have pulmonary embolism. But if you combine all these three in a multi-organ ultrasound, then you increase the sensitivity to 90% without losing much of the specificity. And here is an example of this multi-organ point of care ultrasound finding a dilated and dysfunctional right ventricle, uh, lung ultrasound with B lines and consolidation of the pleural line and at the end you could see the thrombus in the uh, vein. So there is a very nice study with uh, 320 patients. Um, a half of them went to the standard diagnostic strategy com uh, combined with the point of care ultrasound uh, comprising heart, lungs and deep veins. The other were the control group where they have only the standard diagnostic strategy. All of the patients have uh, clinical symptoms uh, which could guide the clinician for the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism. So, 
four hours after admission to the emergency department, correct presumptive diagnosis was reached in 88% in the group of uh, multi organ point of care ultrasound and only 64% in the control group. And now we, have, we come to another application of the B-lines and this is the B-lines during stress echocardiography. What is the meaning of this? Usually at rest you have the normal appearance of the lung with A-lines and during stress uh, because of some kind of diastolic or systolic left ventricular dysfunction, you could, the patient could uh, have pulmonary interstitial edema and B lines could appear and we could see them during a stress echo. I have told you that the complete scan comprises 28 sites. This is too much for a stress echo study, too cumbersome, too time consuming. So we have, um, we have divided a new four sites simplified scan for the stress echo studies and these four sites are at the third intercost, intercostal space at the anterior and middle axillary lines as you see here. Why these uh, specific points? We have studied um, a lot of patients, uh, 135 patients with exercise stress echocardiography with the complete 28 scan and we have compared in at which sites the most of the B lines appear and we were able to discern some typical wet spots where where predominantly B lines appear during stress echo and we can and we have compared afterwards the diagnostic accuracy of the full 28 scan um, one ultrasound during stress echo compared with the 16, 8 and 4 uh, side scan during stress echo and we have found that using four side stress echocardiography with this typical wet spot that I have told you about in the third intercostal space mid and anterior axillary lines bilaterally is um, with a good diagnostic accuracy without a loss of sensitivity and specificity and diagnostic accuracy to detect pulmonary edema. Um, what is the clinical application? There is a very good document again from the European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging and the American Society of Echocardiography for the clinical use of stress echocardiography in non-ischemic cardiac disease. Here it is said that about the B lines, uh, the cutoff point for a pathological response is more than 5 when you use the, the 28 region chest scan. We use the cutoff point of 2 when we use the side region, uh, the, the 4th um, region chest scan. So uh, consider if you are doing a stress echo to use the simplified approach of only four sites for scanning for the B lines. In this document it has been postulated that in patients with both preserved and reduced LV ejection fractions the presence and numbers of B lines also called lung comets correlates with the estimating LV filling pressure and the presence of interstitial lung edema. And also and very importantly, the finding of B lines during exercise stress echo could serve as a useful way to link effort breathlessness with pulmonary congestion. And now, dear colleagues, we come to the pneumothorax. Um, when we have pneumothorax, we have no lung sliding and no B lines. 
Um, let me get a, a one step back and explain what is this lung sliding. This is the regular rhythmic movement synchronized with respiration that occurs between the parietal and the visceral pleura. When we have pneumothorax, this space is filled with air, so we don't have the apposition of the two pleural layers and we don't have the sliding. And also in this space filled with air, we don't have the lung parenchyma and also of course we don't have the B lines. And uh, imagine you have this space in the lung where you don't have sliding, you don't have moving and if you put an M mode, an M mode line through this part, you would see that every line is moving constantly in time without these up and down fluctuations that you see with the moving objects. And this is the typical uh, M mode appearance, which is called also the barcode sign. It looks like a barcode or the seashore sign. Maybe if this is the sand and these are the waves, but I prefer the barcode sign here. So another useful point for uh, diagnosing pneumothorax is the lung point. It is the physical location like here when uh, you see the abolished lung sliding transitioning into an area of sliding which represents the physical limit of the pneumothorax as mapped on the chest low. Another useful thing is the lung pulse. The lung pulse is a different thing. It's, it, it refers to the subtle rhythmic rhythmic movements of the parietal pleura upon the visceral pleura with the cardiac oscillations like tap, 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 tap. To visualize the lung pulse, the following two conditions must be present. One is absent on or very reduced ventilation. That means um, you have no lung, no lung sliding, but not because you don't have the apposition of the two pleural lines, but because the lung is not ventilated. And the other condition is you have to have the apposition of the visceral and parietal pleural lines, that is, you don't have pneumothorax. So the clinical utility of the presence of the lung pulse is first you diagnose a non-ventilated lung which is very important in an intubated patient when you want to see if the two parts, the two lungs are ventilated um, in the right way and also it is very useful to exclude a pneumothorax and now we come to the pneumothorax flow chart when you search for pneumothorax first you look for lung sliding. If you find a lung sliding, then you don't have pneumothorax. If you don't find, you continue to search for the B lines. If you find B lines, again, you don't have pneumothorax. If you don't find B lines, you continue to search for the lung point where the transition happens between the uh, pneumothorax and the normal lung. If you found, if you find this lung point, then for sure you have pneumothorax. If you don't find it, you look for the lung pulse. These oscillations translated from the heart. If you find them, this is no. This is not a pneumothorax, but if you don't find them and all the other answers are correct up till now, then you could reach the diagnosis of pneumothorax. And now, dear colleagues, we're coming to the last of my topic, and this is by odd 
which stands for bring your own device and this is the portable ultrasound which could be made from your own smart device and this is very useful because it could be applied in the uh, ambulance even on the street it could be applied in uh, the operating room for some small surgical procedures it could be applied in the intensive care unit in cases of emergency or even in your uh, office when you're examining ordinary patients so the main thing here is that the technology all of this technology is in the transducer and you connect this transducer to your um, phone smartphone or or to your tablet and you see that the images are quite good you have the b mode you have the cover doppler uh, you have different applications also the software is very very user friendly you could freeze the image you could turn the cover doppler slow flow a fast flow you could turn the M mode and also you could save loops and um, send them for example to your mentor if you're not sure about what you're seeing and you want some advice for someone with more experience than you so Biot is making the point of care ultrasound truly accessible it is affordable it is easy of use and it combines as you see the quality of imaging technology with the mobility everywhere you could use it and the connectivity wherever you want to send the images you could send the images so uh, Biot is intended for quick looks, triage assessment and procedural guidance at the point of care but remember that it is not a complete replacement for fully featured card based systems it is not a solution for all point of care ultrasound needs and it is not, it ten, not intended for a complete diagnostic exam workups with calculations and reports and complete diagnosis. So my dear colleagues, the take home messages of this presentation, I hope you enjoyed it, are about, uh, first about the point of care cardiac ultrasound, which was the focus one and to rapidly detect a limited number of critical cardiac condition targets LV and RV function and size assessment, pericardial effusion, intravascular volume assessment. Then about the point of care lung ultrasound with its many many applications starting from the pleural effusions B lines even during stress echo, acute respiratory distress syndrome, shock patients, pulmonary embolism and pneumothorax. And at the end we talked about the point of care ultrasound with Biot bring your own device which could be done in the ambulance even on the street during interventions in the ICU or even in the office. It is affordable and easy to use. It combines quality of imaging technology with the mobility and connectivity with everyone you want. But you should remember that it's not a complete rep replacement for the fully card-based system. So this was a short overview for the point of care on ultrasound. I hope that it was useful for you. If you have some questions, if you have some suggestions for a future topic, please write them in the comment section. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, have a nice evening.